There are more than 7.5 billion conscious beings living on planet Earth. And if you include animals, the number of self-aware beings increases even more. Yet for some reason we seem hell-bent on creating artificial consciousness instead of interacting with the beings we already have. Oh well, I guess artificially intelligent robots are pretty cool. But is this even possible? Can a robot ever be self-aware? Can we create consciousness? Starting at number 5, what is it? Before you can create something, you must first figure out what it is. And with consciousness, this is no easy task. 3D printing an artificial leg bone is relatively simple since all you need to do is recreate the physical structures of the item and make sure it functions in the same way. Creating an artificial organ, such as a liver or kidney, is a lot more complex, but still possible, since again, you're merely reconstructing physical matter. Consciousness? Now, that's something else entirely. We think it's a function of the human brain, but one we cannot yet define. In medical terms, consciousness is simply a state of awareness and responsiveness. Philosophers would add to this the ability to know things, to commit intentional acts, to think about oneself, and to experience events. Neuroscientists have attempted to quantify these elements and locate the physical parts of the brain responsible for creating them. And in doing so, they've come up with competing theories for what they believe consciousness is. Number 4. The Integrated Information Theory the Integrated Information Theory asserts that consciousness is no more than a wide variety of data processed by your brain. It is your understanding of the color purple. It is the feeling of chaffed thighs. It is the sensory information your body uses to tell you what's what. This theory begins by working from the bottom up, taking every basic element of consciousness on its own and gradually coalescing them into something more. Basically. Consciousness is determined by how much your brain processes an event beyond what you directly experience. If someone were to see and smell the inside of a dirty locker room but have no emotional response to it, they would be conscious, to a degree. But if someone were to see and smell a dirty locker room and feel disgust over it, they would be more conscious. They had done something with their sensory perception which the other person had not. The sum was greater than its parts. If this is accurate, we cannot recreate consciousness artificially. Creating a machine that could measure and compute a response to sensory stimulation would not lead to the kind of conscious experience organic beings enjoy. However, there is one bizarre way we may be able to do it, and it involves animals. Lots of animals. At 3. The Rat King The theory of integrated information can be used to analyze the varying degrees of consciousness found in animals and human infants. Tests on babies show they experience consciousness awareness at 5 months old. And tests on animals have also proved that they have an inherent sense of self. This idea that animals are conscious beings makes it much harder to eat them or wear their skin. But it's a harsh truth humanity must get used to. In 2012, a group of leading scientists from various fields of neuroscience gathered at Cambridge University to sign a document called the Cambridge Declaration. The following statement is an extract from that document. We decided to reach a consensus and make a statement directed to the public that is not scientific. It's obvious to everyone in this room that animals have consciousness, but it is not obvious to the rest of the world. So, if we understand that consciousness is present in other creatures, and we think it cannot be replicated using artificial non-conscious beings, could we combine organic consciousness to create a higher level of consciousness? Maybe we can.
if one 2015 study is anything to go by. Miguel Nicolichis is a neurobiologist whose team successfully created an organic computer made from four individual rats. Individually, these rats were nothing special. But when the four were connected via electrodes hooked up to their brains, they formed a super brain, able to complete tasks more efficiently. And if consciousness is indeed present entirely inside the physical brain, then maybe the secret to unlocking higher consciousness is just a matter of finding which areas to hook up. At number two, the Clostrum. In 2014, researchers at George Washington University discovered a consciousness flip switch deep within the brain. By stimulating a region known as the Clostrum, they were able to make a female patient unconscious at the push of a button. She remained awake, just not aware. And this discovery offered further proof of what neuroscientists have been saying for decades. If consciousness is an orchestra, the claustrum is the conductor. We have determined that the claustrum facilitates communication between the two hemispheres of the brain and the seamless nature of this synchronicity is thought to be crucial in the achievement of consciousness. How the claustrum does this is yet to be identified but we do know this region is present in the brains of all mammals. However, when a group of primates had their collective claustrums probed in 2010, theirs did not appear capable of merging information from separate areas of the brain. So according to all this, the key to creating artificial consciousness is to understand how the claustrum works. Or just rip out your own claustrum and hand it to a robot. There you go, buddy. I'm done with life. Thinking about stuff is... Just too hard. And at number one, the global workspace. Another neuroscientific theory regarding consciousness is called the global workspace. And if this one is accurate, then artificial awareness may be more possible than we thought. The theory claims consciousness acts like computer memory, retaining and recalling information at will. Humans know to avoid putting their hands in blenders because our memories tell us they are sharp. And sharp things have hurt us before. A thought process which also stops me from putting things inside my ex-wives. This reflective use of previously acquired information is no different to how your computers work. When you type in the genre of your favorite naughty movie, Autocomplete knows which brand of filth you prefer because you've searched for it before. According to the global workspace theory, this is what consciousness does. Your level of awareness is simply your brain's ability to broadcast information around itself from a bank of memories and then act accordingly. If true, we're not far from creating artificial consciousness already. All we need to do is add a few more layers of complexity and shazam! We are consciousness creators. But some would have a problem with this conclusion as consciousness is deemed to be a magical property above the manipulation of mere mortals. Skeptics would say that any consciousness we could create would be lesser to that possessed by humans. They'd say it's fake whereas human consciousness is real. But is our definition of real even relevant? If something appears conscious and it acts in a conscious way, who are we to say it cannot be? Humans create consciousness every day by giving birth, so we know it can be made from ordinary physical matter. Why must this matter be organic? Why can't it be a product of silicon rather than carbon? In its most basic form, our consciousness seems to be the result of electrical signals sent between parts of the brain. So if this is no different to how a computer works, and we don't think it's accurate to say that computers are conscious, then are human beings also not conscious? We're going to discuss this in our bonus video, Are Humans Really Conscious? Which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and indeed all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool. We still love you. And we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions.
as you'll find out by watching our recent video on the reasons why humans are.